Shalom Mishpaka. I really want to thank Yahuwah, Elohim of Israel, for the opportunity He's given to me once again to be able to really fellowship with you. And um, today I just want to share with you the revelation that Yahuwah showed me of the Mashiach's death, who he died for, and the events that took place the day he died. But before I continue, I would just like to say a brief word of prayer. Yahuwah, in Shamayim, I thank you for this day. I am praying and asking this hour that you use me to be a baraka to your children all over the world. I am praying and asking you that you speak through me. Let them not see me, but let them see you. Let them not hear my voice, but let them hear the Ruach HaKodesh speaking to their hearts and interpreting this revelation in a way that they can understand. Thank you, Toda Yahuwah Rafa, Toda Yahuwah El Shaddai. So be it. It is done. Um, please, can you turn with me to the book of Tehillim 22 from verse 1 to 31. Tehillim chapter 22 from verse 1. Let us read. I'm reading from the Hallelujah Scriptures. It says this, To the chief singer on dough of the morning, or some of the weed, My earl, my earl, why have you forsaken me? Far from saving me and the words of my groaning. O oh, my Elohim, I call by day, but you do not answer, and by night, but I find no rest. Yet you are Kodesh, enthroned on the praises of Israel. Our fathers trusted in you. They trusted and you delivered them. They cried to you and we are delivered. They trusted in you and we are not ashamed. Now, um, if you check the renewed covenants, known as the Gospels, you will realize that the only thing that was written concerning the prayer of our Mashiach is a lie, a lie, Lamak Sabakhtani. I don't want to go into details because I don't want the video to be too long. You see that the only thing that is written is a lie, a lie, Lamak Sabakhtani, which is being interpreted. My L, my L, why have you forsaken me? Okay. So, but the full details of the prayer that he prayed while he was impaled is written here by Revelation, Sovereign David, in the book of Tehillim, Psalms chapter 22. Now, I want you to take note of verse 6. It says this, But I had a worm and no man, a reproach of men, and despised by the people. Please turn with me to the book of Yeshayahu, chapter 53, from verse 1. That is Isaiah 53, verse 1. It says, Who has believed our report? And to whom was the arm of Yahuwah revealed? For he grew up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of dry ground. He has no form or splendor that we should look upon him, no appearance that we should desire him. Despised and rejected by men, a man of pains and knowing sickness, and as one from whom the face is hidden, being despised, and we did not consider him. Truly, he has borne our sicknesses and carried our pains. Yet, we reckon him stricken, smitten by Elohim, and afflicted. Now, he said, but he was pierced for our transgressions. He's talking about his people. He was crushed for our wickedness. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we are healed. Please, let's jump to verse 8. Okay. He said, He was taken from prison and from judgment. And as for his generation, who considered that he shall be cut off from the land of the living? Now look at this. For the transgression of my people, he was stricken. Now, if we compare what is written in Tehillim 22, Psalms 22, with the description of Yeshayahu, Isaiah, you will understand 
why he said here in verse 6. Tell him 22 verse 6. I am a worm and no man, a reproach of men despised by the people. And then if you observe, you see that Yeshayahu here wrote at the beginning of 53 verse 1, Who has believed our report? And to whom was the arm of Yahuwah revealed? You can see that this revelation that he was giving, he was saying, who is going to believe him? That even the scribes, the son of Elohim like this, to be someone that was sickly, that did not have um, any beauty or any comeliness or handsomeness that people would desire him. So who is going to believe him? That if he, tells, if he says that the son of Elohim came and he was very mad and he was ugly, that nobody, nobody wanted anything to do with him. Who is going to believe me? That's what he's saying here. So that is just um, the explanation of Tehillim 22 verse 6. I'll go further. And then if you observe, it's written there that he was like that because he had to take on himself the transgressions of his people. If we look at um, if we look at the book of um, Shemot, that's Exodus. Exodus chapter chapter twenty three, from verse twenty three. You see what it says there? Okay. Let me jump to 25, okay? It says, And you shall serve Yahuwah, your Elohim, and he shall barack your bread and your water, and I shall remove sickness from your midst. So now, if you read the book of Exodus, and you read the book of Leviticus and Numbers, you will see that Yahuwah said that if you do not obey him, He's going to bring the sickness. He's going to bring sickness. He's going to make them run from their enemies. There are a lot of curses associated with disobeying his Torah. And if you obey him, he said he will barack you. He will take away sickness from your midst. Now, Yahusha came for the sole purpose to take our transgression on himself and the sickness, not of everyone, but to be specific, of his people. That's what he said. His people. And that is who are his people? The people of Israel. Who are his people? The Yahudi. Those are the people he came for. And he had to take on himself the sicknesses that should be on them because they are not following Yahuwah. And that's why he was described the way Yahusha, um, Yeshayahu saw him, that Isaiah saw him in his revelation of how he was going to look like. And that's why he looked that way. And that's why he was that way. It was because of us, not because he was cursed of Yahuwah. Hallelujah. Um, so now, can we continue? We'll go to Tehillim 22. Now let's go to verse 7 now. I've explained 6. I hope I'm not so fast. <clears throat> okay. 7 says, All those who see me mock me, they shoot out the lip, they shake the head. He trusted in Yahuwah, let him rescue him, let him deliver him, seeing he has delighted in him. You see that um, if you look at 7 to 8, according to the accounts of the renewed covenant, that's Matthew, Matthew, Yahoo, that's Matthew, Mike, Luke, you see that that was the taunting, the mockery, the insult they gave him, Yahusha, while he was impaled. That, ah, he trusted, ah, let's see how he's going to be saved. He's this person that said he's going to um, destroy the temple in three days and build it back. Let's see how he's going to do that. He's just saying, this is what he's saying in his prayers. To Elohim of Israel. So let's go to verse 9 now. He says, For you are the one who took me out of the womb, make, made me secure on my mother's breasts. Verse 10 says, I was cast upon you from birth. From my mother's womb, you have been my El. Do not be far from me, for this stress is near, for there is none to help. Many bulls. Many bulls have surrounded me. Strong ones of Bashan have encircled me. They have opened their mouths against me. Now, he's describing now spiritually what he was seeing. Of course, there are no visible bulls around him. These are demons from the pits of hell that was there to ensure that he does not fulfill his mission and to make his mission as difficult as possible. Now, let's go to verse 14. He says, I have been poured out like water. And all my bones have been spread apart. 
My heart has become like wax. It has melted in the midst of my inward parts. Now, you can see, this is just describing how he was impaled. Now, if I should imagine this, that means it was like an X. Because he said all his parts. He said, all my bones have been spread apart. That means the hands were open, the legs were spread apart. According to what is written here. Now, let us go to verse 15. He said this, My strength is dried. Please turn with me to the book of Yochana, chapter 19, verse 28. That's John, the book of John, chapter 19, verse 28. <clears throat> but before I read it, let me read Tehillim 22, verse 15. It said this, He said, My strength is dried like a pot shield, and my tongue is cleaving to my jaws, and to the dust of death you are appointing me. This is showing how thirsty he was while he was impaled. So thirsty that his tongue was gluing, was gluing to his jaws. Now let's look at the book of Yochana, Johanna, according to this one. Chapter 19, verse 28, that's the book of John. 19, verse 28, it says this. After this, Yahusha, knowing that all had been accomplished in order that the scripture might be accomplished said i thirst take note of this he said after this yahusha knowing all that had been accomplished in order that the scripture might be accomplished said i thirst that is another topic i'm going to i'm going to elaborate on if yahuwah allows me to really elaborate on it but I want to just point out here to show you that this shows very clearly that when Yahusha came on earth, he knew himself. He knew what he came for. He knew what was written of him in the scriptures. And he deliberately and consistently worked towards accomplishing every single thing that was written of him according to the scriptures. It was a deliberate thing. Listen, after this, Yahusha, knowing that all had been accomplished, in order that the scripture might be accomplished, said, I thirst. He knew that that was the next thing to do, and he did it, just so that everything can rhyme exactly as is written of him. Now, there are questions I want to ask you. The first question is, do you know what has been written concerning you the second question if you do are you consciously deliberately following and fulfilling what has been written concerning you like Yahusha now if Yahuwah permits me I'm going to do another video after this to help you understand what has been written concerning you or help you know who you are and what Yahuwah wants of you. So let's continue. 22 verse 16, Tehillim, Tehillim 22 verse 16, that's Psalms 22 verse 16. He said, for dogs have surrounded me, a crowd of evil ones have encircled me, piercing my hands and my feet. Here is Yahusha crying out to Elohim, telling him, look at what these dogs are doing to me. They are the ones piercing my hands and piercing my feet. They've encycled me. Now, who are the dogs? Who is Yahusha referring to as dogs? Please turn with me to the book of Martin Tiahu, chapter 15, from verse 21 to 27. That's the book of Matthew, chapter 15. From verse 21 to 27, I read, it says this, And Yahusha went out from there, and withdrew to the parts of Saul and Sidon. And see, a woman of Canaan came from those borders, and cried out to him, saying, Have compassion on me, O Adonai, Ben of the weed. My daughter is badly demon-possessed. 
but he did not answer her a word. And his Talmudim came and asked him, saying, Send her away, because she cries after us. And he answering said, I was not sent except to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. You see, it's very, very clear. Yahusha knew his mission and knew where he was specifically sent to and knew who he was to die for. Die for. And that's to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. According to the prophets, Yeshayahu said he was sent to his brothers. And also, Tehillim said the same thing to his brethren. We are going to get back. We are going to get there. Then now, this is the reply he said to her. I have been sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel alone. That's what he was saying to her. He said, but she came and was bowing to him, saying, Adonai, help me. And he answered and said, It is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to little dogs. He called her a dog. But she continued with her feet and said, But she said, Yes, Adonai, for even the little dogs eat the crumbs which fall from their master's table. She acknowledged she was a dog. And that is it. There are only two categories of people here or not. It's either you're a Yahudi or you're a dog. You're, a, 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 of the, you're a people of Israel or you're a Gentile. And both Gentile and dogs is the same thing. They mean the same thing. It's used interchangeably. Anybody that is not a Yahudi, according to Yahuwah, is referred to as a dog. And that is the way Yahuwah sees them, and that's the way Yahusha sees them. Unless they repent, change from their evil ways, and begin to obey the Torah as given to Moshe from Yahuwah. Now, I want us to go to the book of Okay, now let's look at, uh, before we go, I want you to see, look at what she said. Let's look at Matthew 15, verse 22. It says, And see, a woman of Canaan came from those borders. Is a woman of Canaan. Take notes of where she is coming from, Canaan. Please turn with me to the book of Shemot, Exodus 23, from verse 23 to 28. So, here we are, Exodus chapter 23, from verse 23, it says this, For my messenger shall go before you, and shall bring you in to the Amorites, and the Hittites, and the Perizzites, and the Canaanites, that's where that woman came from, and the Hewites, and the Yebusites, and I shall cut them off. Yahweh is saying this, he will cut them off. So as clear as day. Turn with me to the book of Hazan, that's Revelation 22, verse 15. There, yeah, this is what it says. But outside are the dogs and those who enchant with drugs and those who whore and the murderers and the idolaters and all who love and do falsehood. But outside are the dogs. It's very, very clear. No dog is going to enter the Shamayim. No Gentile is going to enter the Shamayim. Don't be deceived here. It's either you're a Yahudi or you're a Gentile. And if you acknowledge you're a Gentile and you decide to remain a Gentile, know that you're not going to see the reign of Yahuwah. But if you know you're a Gentile, but you want to be a Yahudi, you want to to be incorporated. You want to be part of Israel. Then, you have to go to the Torah, read the Torah, study it, and consistently apply yourself to it. And cry to Yahuwah for mercy. And if it is ordained of you, He will make it happen. Now, go with me to the book of Tehillim. That's the book of Psalms 9, verse 5. It says this, you have rebuked the Gentiles, you have destroyed the wicked, 
you have wiped out their name forever and ever. That is the judgment for the Gentiles. The same, no, also known as dogs. Listen again, I read again. You have rebuked the Gentiles. You have destroyed the wicked. You have wiped out their name forever and ever. Now turn with me to the book of Tehillim, chapter 9, from verse 17 to 20. Let's read. It says, The wicked return to the grave, or the Gentiles that forget Elohim. For the need is not always forgotten, neither the expectancy of the poor lost forever. Arise, O Yahuwah. Do not let man prevail. Let the Gentiles be judged before your face. Put them in fear, O Yahuwah. Let the Gentiles know the immortal seller. The last but not the least is Yirmiyahu, that's Jeremiah chapter 10. From verse 1. Characteristics of the Gentiles. Hear the word with which Yahuwah speaks to you, O house of Israel. Listen very carefully to this. Thus, says, thus said Yahuwah, do not learn the way of the Gentiles, and do not be frightened by the signs of the Shamayim, for the Gentiles are frightened by them. For the, the prescribed customs of these people are worthless. For one cuts a tree from the forest, work for the hands of a craftsman with a cutting tool, they adorn it with silver and gold, they fasten it with nails and hammers so that it does not topple. They are like a rounded post and they do not speak. They have to be carried because they do not walk. Do not be afraid of them, for they do no evil, nor is it in them to do any good. This is just a description of the Christmas tree. Christmas, the celebration of Christmas and the decoration of Christmas tree did not start now. Neither did it start with the advent of Christianity. It was actually in place before Yahusha came to the earth. Very clear. And here is Yahuwah warning clearly the children of Israel not to follow the way of the Gentiles. The way of the Gentiles is pagan, is hidden, and it's an abomination to Yahuwah. It's very, very clear. These are the characteristics of the Gentiles. I'll just um, note um, um, list here. If you do any of these things and you're comfortable doing them, know that you're a Gentile and you need to repent. You need to ask Yahuwah to forgive you if you have been convicted by his Ruach HaKodesh. You only be convicted if you're a Yahudim. If you're not a Yahudim, you're not going to receive any conviction. Rather, you're going to argue with this. Now, this is it. Number one, celebration of Christmas. That's a pagan tradition. And it's a Gentile custom, which Yahuwah frowns at. And he says we must not copy. Celebration of the Easter. You know, the Easter eggs and Easter bunny. Go and read the history. You know that it's not Christianity that started. It started before Christianity. Celebration of the Mother's Day, of the Father's Day, Valentine's Day, Birthday. All these things are pagan, Gentile customs and traditions, which Yahuwah says his children must not follow, must not copy. Mishpaka and those that are not yet in the fold. I want to pause here and continue the next part from verse 17 in another video because I don't want the video to be too long. But this video that I've just done, I need you to sit down and reflect on what I have spoken with the help of the Ruach HaKodesh and tell yourself the truth. One thing we mortals are addicts are doing is lying to ourselves. We are very, very quick at lying to ourselves and telling ourselves the truth. And when we lie to ourselves, we end up making the wrong decisions. Only to realize, oh my God, oh sorry, forgive me, Yahuwah. You say, oh my goodness, I shouldn't have done this. I should have known that I didn't have enough money for this than to engage myself. Why did I tell myself that I can do this or do that? Oh, oh, my, oh my goodness. I thought I had the option to do this or do that. Oh, I should have sat down to think properly before blotting it all out. Yes. But when it comes to your soul, when it comes to your calling and to your purpose, 
is good to sit yourself down and iron it things out with yourself. Tell yourself the truth and nothing but the truth. When it comes to the matter of the soul and spirit, it's a matter of life and death. So please, ask yourself, are you a Yahudi or are you a Gentile? And do something about it right now.